it's it's wonderful to see so many people paying attention to what we do because i think at this time of our life it's a great cause we can you know gather together and as we know uh, this series named after Dorothy DeLay, who was a graduate of Michigan State University in 1937. And uh, of course, you were her student, one of the most accomplished students. And I would like to ask you just to share maybe some memories of the time you spent with Ms. DeLay, or perhaps you'll remember interesting story or some advices, memorable advices, which stays, which stay with you up to this day. Well, uh, there are many things to talk about when we uh, when we all think of Dorothy DeLay. Uh, in so many ways and undiscovered ways, uh, she was an extraordinary person. Uh, most of her lessons were very quiet. Hello, that's wonderful, sweetie. Thank you very much goodbye. It is only much later uh, when the lesson was done, uh, you started wondering. First, you were angry. So what is this? <laughs> Why? Well, what is this? And I was the one, I was a person that uh, immediately expressed my dissatisfaction. And we started off uh, in totally off, off way. Uh, I was not a conformist immediately. I was, well, I don't know, teenager or not teenager, difficult or not difficult. Uh, I had a certain idea about what should be done and what she should give me. Being a selfish enough person, I admitted straight out selfish enough to say, okay, well now, you know, everything is paid, let's hear it. And all of a sudden, this incredible silence. And this silence made me think a lot. It actually opened the door for me, an extraordinary door, the inner door of a violinist, the self-criticism, which takes a different dimension. And that's something she was a master building in. Uh, but one word or two words would make you think for a whole week. And that's how she was. I mean, of course, we can talk about her obsession with, uh, uh, with the book, The Inner Game of Tennis. We all know that all these things happened and everybody had to go through all this uh, cycle of how to play tennis or how to play violin, depending on what you're doing, etc., etc., etc. But she was she was able she was a sort of a person that was able to say in one word or three words the essence of things and i found that to be most rewarding and her greatest asset of course she was a person that could talk a lot and express herself a lot and we had long conversations actually away from the studio but that was my first impression of her yeah, she had a very unusual way of tackling the violin and you could study a lot about the kind of choices you can make the, regardless of what kind of a player you are. Uh, developing or, or very developed or not so developed, one could always study from those three or four words that she was uh, mentioning. I don't know if you know this, but Heifetz, when he studied a new concerto, he first played it on a piano. Mm -hmm. He was a quite accomplished pianist. And Miss Delay was too, right? And Miss Delay admired that particular point very much with Heifetz, so much so that she was improving her piano playing. And I can tell you personally, I have done... Sibelius concerto with her complete really where she was accompanying me on a piano and that was something I would remember about her it showed me you know what what do you do with a person who says one word every 30 minutes <laughs> and then all of a sudden plays the complete accompaniment of the Sibelius concerto 
Of course, it's, it's a different angle. I think it's a great example to be not just one dimensional, but to learn from the different aspect of, of the piece. Of course, if you know, if you can play, but even if you're just aware of what's really happening, and when you learn the phrase, you know what orchestra does, I think it's very productive too. But it's great, I didn't, I mean, if everyone would uh, be you know, thrilled to hear you say this because I never heard that she would accompany you. I know that she was capable of doing this, but it's a wonderful story. As you know, I spent a few years also with uh, Miss Delay and actually she was the one who invited me to the United States and it's uh, one of the biggest reasons I came to Juliet in 1990. I remember how we met actually with you just a few years before in, I think in 87 in, in Neunstadt at Villa Musica. And you came, I think you were 30 years old or something. I, I didn't really hear you play until that time, but I remember, first of all, I remember the reaction of uh, Yuri Bashmet who was there and Viktor Tritikov who was my teacher at that time, that there were Shlomo Mins is coming, Shlomo Mins is coming. So for us, it was very special. <laughs> And then we were sitting at the rehearsal where you were playing, I think, Schubert Aktiat, I still remember vividly that. And then I think we were at the same concert. We didn't work together at the time, but it was a very special uh, experience meeting you and especially the reaction of my great teachers and admirers like Bashmiet at that time and Tretikov, who would say, this is, this is a great violinist. So it was the best introduction. And, and I, of course, I again, again thank you for uh, doing this.